What's going on guys and welcome back to another Satisfactory video. Where last time we worked on this highway to send our trains from the oil facility over to our starter base. Just so we can produce our project assembly parts to unlock our tier 7 and tier 8 milestones. Which means we can work into our bauxite refinery, logistics marks 5, your hazmat suit, all the good stuff. And this is where this area is going to come into play. Because this is where our mega factory is going to be situated and our future items processed. So the first job today is to start extracting this bauxite node right here. Hence the reason we've laid the foundation down. Because I would like to get a train station in this location which will go straight along there all the way up to the uh, Red Forest and also just before the Titan Forest because there's quite a few rich ores. And oh yeah, I've got a hyper cannon to take me from there back to the starter base in case I need any supplies along the way. But also remember, if you're enjoying the video, to like, subscribe and also leave a comment even if it's just an emoji. Okay, so as you can tell, I've started to extract the bauxite and I'm making sure that all my lights are 480, which is from this location right here. And as you can tell, I've got an impure, an impure and a normal and they're actually merging together to make a 480 line and then i've got a pure line just here as well and i've done the same with the red forest and as you can tell all i'm doing is i'm overclocking the miners to make sure that they well fill a 480 line which this one is merging with another one to make a 480 but also we've placed down a radio tower because for those that don't know if you go into a radio tower now and power it since the recent update you can actually see the ores that are being utilized or not utilized in a said radius so anything with a tick has been collected. Anything that hasn't, hasn't. But also you can see the impurities of the normal. You can see, you know, if the normal, if the pure, you can see the waters. So if you place a, a few of these around the map, you can basically see all the ores. But also you can see on the left-hand side here what animals you're going to expect and the spheres and all that kind of stuff. But they're technically not needed until 1.0 because this is going to be part of the story. So I've got all the ore from the Red Forest going down here, which comes down this big, big cliff and heads along here because as you can see, I've already added a train station, which comes together with the other bauxite nodes and gets stored into the train station ready for transit. But as you can see, I've also done a little bit of decorating work and I wasn't going to show this on the video, but I thought I might as well do. I was kind of testing around with some things on the Twitch streams whilst I was doing this to see if it worked and what didn't work. So yeah, then the train comes here, picks up the bauxite, and then makes its way down this track down here, very, very short and simple, until it reaches the train station over here, where it will then unload the bauxite into the storage containers on the output side. And then, yep, it just goes back around and does the full loop, and it just continues a circuit. Okay, so now that we've got the train station in, what I want to do is I want to look at the refinery real quick, and I want to check out Sloppy Aluminum, which is an alternate recipe for, well, making a luminous solution, which is going to be something you need for aluminium. So you can see it needs 200 bauxite, but also 200 water. And we discussed in the live stream, as you know, I like to be a little different. And I wanted to make it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. Because normally you'll send your water from the water extractors directly into your machines. So I wanted to do something a little different, like I said. Which is I want to take this area right here from the oil plant. And then extend the highway that we built in the last episode all the way on the south side of the map all the way up to our train station right here which means we need to build a big long train line from there because what i'm going to do is i'm going to package the water send it to said location unpackage it send it into a buffer and then send it into a machine like i said it's a little complicated and yes i did mean packaged water i could easily send the water via fluid transport which obviously could go on a train or I could do what every other satisfactory player does and just get a water extractor, build a pipe and put it into a machine. But I'm going to make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be because I'm going to be packaging the water here, sending it via the train line on the south side of the map, unpackaging it at the mega factory where it'll get stored into fluid buffers and then onto the machines. However, the empty packages are going to get diverted back onto another train line sent back down the southern rail line and then reused again to make bottled water. So like I said, a little bit more complicated than, and a, well, and a lot more work than what you would do if you were going from a machine into a pipe into your machine again. So the first step I need to do is I need to start building a foundation down here and start putting some constructors and some packages down and some water extractors. Okay, so what I've done is I've got the plastic that's being produced here from the resin in the oil uh, facility. 
It's then going into these uh, smart splitters, which are then are pushing along and making um, empty canisters. But then the overflow is being sent up into the train line to be sent over to the starter base. So these are just making uh, the empty canisters, which is 480 per minute. It then runs underground along the ceiling mounts, which I love, by the way, which is a new feature from Update 7, if you do not know yet. And then it comes down here into the water packages. So these are only going to go into these for now, until there's a certain quantity of empty canisters on the loop, which will then get sent back around to be reused again. So then eventually we can cut this off and it won't be needed. But like I said before, these empty canisters are making the water, uh, water bottles which are one cubic meter per bottle and the output 60 per each one which makes 60 cubic meters of water per each machine and then they're going to get sent into a train station which is going to get put here when then that train station is going to connect up with the highway which will be getting placed in the next couple of days which will be on the live stream and then that is going to go all the way over to the mega base where then another train will come back with the empty packages over on this side which will then send the empty canisters back around this loop. So what I need to do is I need to double this now and then start sending the empty canisters this way. Have I powered these? I don't think I have. I even set the recipes. So let's just grab uh, the recipes, control C that, and then just control V that all the way down. Or if you're smart and you have a smart mouse, you can actually set that in a key bind or a little uh, hotkey. So you can press Control V at a click of a button without pressing Control and V like you would normally standard do, you know? You know? Next, I just want to put the Mark 1 belts coming out the machine connecting to this one. But then I also need to remember in the future, um, I because I'm only filling this line right now, it's very inefficient. So this right here, all these 8 times 60 is 480. These two here are going to be on a separate line, which I've done here. And these two are on a separate line. So this one and then these two are merging together onto this line, which will also merge with the other four that's going to be here to, to go onto the same line. So we're going to have five freight stations with one train station on this side. So we'll have five 480 lines going into the train station. And then when I've added the output lanes, I just need to connect the power lines up and then put the splitters on the input side and then connect the belts. And then when this line is not making any more water products, we're just going to disconnect this line and then send these empty packages over onto this line and then connect that up and then just wait for that manifold to actually fill all of these machines up with bottles. And then always make sure you fill your water pipes with water before you turn on any of these machines or getting it up and running, unless you might have a few water line issues. So then all we need to do next is get this and duplicate this right here, add four more water extractors and make sure um, that I'm going to overclock the water extractors to make sure they send out 300 cubic meters per line. And then that will merge with another one to make a 600. So then we've got 600 water going down each line. And then Bob's your uncle. Okay, so as you can see, I've now added the other section, which is the four water extractors and the additional uh, packages. But also now, like I said, there is five freight stations with one train station, which will, well, distribute the water from here over to the mega plant. This will eventually get larger and larger. And this whole plantation here that we built uh, a few episodes ago will eventually get removed as well. And this is going to be our dedicated water facility. So that's what this is going to be. Because for now, and I say for now, because it might change, I'm tempted to distribute all my water from this place to said buildings, which are going to re require water in the future, unless there are a small number of machines. For example, if two refineries only need water and there's water right next to it, I would use that. But for a, my large builds, I'm tempted to kind of make this larger and larger and add more trains and more trains because we have the highway which is going to be technically going around the map right it's basically a you know a huge highway that we can start splitting things off and all that good stuff and then it might come down to it where these bottom layers where the possible trucks might be going might get additional train lines on and it might just be for dedicated train lines and then maybe do like some form of uh, you know stops at certain locations for trucks to distribute onto train lines. That's a train. 
into it. I hope they not not hit me. So back over here, what I want to do now is when we add the train line, which is going to be the inbound line here, I need to make sure that there's going to be five uh, output lines, so five exactly the same as this. And then we're going to have the furthest one here come along a 480 belt here, which is going to feed this water extract uh, water extractor, water packager, and this water water packager. Because the other ones are going to be sending 480, and that can only feed eight machines. So the other two will get fed by this end one, which will feed this that two, that two, and that two, equaling eight in total as well. Okay, so after many, many hours later, you can see I have added the highway on the south side of the map. We've got the trains coming in. We've got the train station on the left, which is for the empty packages, and this one to pick up the water packages. The water bottles, I should say. And I've even coloured it blue just so you guys can visually understand what's on what train. Then the train comes out of the station, works its way around this these islands here, and then onto the on-ramp, which then merges with the central loop. And then make its way over to the mega base, where, as you can see, we've just kind of made these kind of junctions just to turn in and turn on. And then it will unpackage the water bottles in this station right here. Okay, so I've added the next train station, which is the empty canisters. We can see the train just leaving now. Um, obviously, nothing's been connected up yet because we need to work on the next project, which we're going to build downstairs in a second. So I've got quite a few trains on this line right now. You can kind of see right in the distance over there, the water train has just left. And we've also got all the signs and well, sign signals on all of this. Uh, and... I think I'm going to change this at some point, this whole inbound and outbound line, just because of, one, traffic sake. But down here, I'm kind of working out the flooring, and I think I'm going to put my aluminium uh, setup on this floor right here in the base, because this is going to be a large build. We're going to be requiring oil, we're going to be requiring scrap, we're going to be requiring a lot of items. And we've got a lot of oil over there, which is not a problem, but we're going to make resin, we'll make more plastic... There is so much to do, but most of that is going to get done in the next video. But in this one, we're still trying to figure out the water extraction. But for those that know me, I always do an underflooring, which is where the pipe's going to come from. So the train station is going to send the pipes onto this floor, and then they're going to directly go into, well, holes, which are going to come down onto this layer right here. And then we're going to start unpackaging the layers. So we're going to need five lines of water impact, uh, water unpackages. Water unpackages to go here, which are then going to go into water buffers here. And then we kind of need to, you know, see what we're going to do with it and kind of finalize it because we are working on mega structure stuff now. And I don't want to be deleting stuff afterwards. But my rule of thumb is if you don't want it, delete it. You know, I've said it multiple times. Okay, so as you can see with the water extractors, it's a very, very simple, like, simple setup. We've got the five lines of water bottles coming down here. Then five lines there, which is going to be for the empty canisters to go into their train station. This is the inbound train station. That then comes around into four water extractors per line, which is emptying the uh, water bottles. So 120 water, uh, packaged water is going into 120 into a line and 120 empty canisters are coming out. So the empty canisters are coming out and being merged underneath but then the water is being put into the line, into a Mark II line, which is then going to go into storage here. Uh, so it's a pretty nifty setup, and I've kind of done this kind of design thing for the roof. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or what. I don't know if I like it, but it's working for now. And obviously, this is not functional right now because we do need to send the water that's in these lines into the storage so then these can actually function for a short duration until they start being getting consumed by water uh, by water by machines but just to make this a little clearer that's 120 water 120 120 120 that's 480 which means this line here has got 480 water in it and then because we've got five lines the fifth line here which is this central line each of these machines are actually sending the water from their said machine onto each of these four lines to merge in so that will equal a 600 line, a 600, and a 600, and 600. If I didn't merge it, it'll be 480, 480, 480, 480, 480. Hopefully that makes sense. So it makes more sense just to merge than 120 lines onto the 480 to make a 600 line just to fill the pipe. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to start looking at if this is going to be a walkway. So am I going to be walking in this general direction? I don't know yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to place down uh, kind of like a little wall uh just so we can kind of 
figure out and kind of give us a baseline of what we want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a wall like right there. Well, a road barrier, sorry. And then get myself a uh, glass window. Um, I'm going to put down the... Let's put the hex, hex frame down. I'm just going to put that there. Hold control and switch that up. And then we're just going to zoop this. I'm getting a lot of people in the comments as well thinking this is a mod. This is not a mod. This is just in-game vanilla zooping. Just hit R and you can select zoop right here. Some people are thinking it's a mod. I guess you don't know about the, the whole zooping thing. And then once I've got this down, I'm just going to grab myself a um, printed beam. Painted beam, not printed beam. And then get myself a small metal pillar. Then I'm just going to zoop that and attach it to that pillar and then just take that all the way to the end. And then we're going to do it on the top of this one. Take that to the middle. Get the metal pillar. Take that there. Zoop that across. Remove that. And then add that there. So it creates our own little dynamic wall. And then we can start adding the signs and everything like I normally do in all my builds. If you obviously watch my other videos, you will know about them. And then you can see the little square signs down here for the lights. And we'll create some, you know, a little bit of depth on these. So I'm going to do this on this side. Um, so I want to grab myself another pillar that should be enough swap you out zoop you along and then again painted uh, painted beam there painted beam there pillar along pillar along remove that and remove that quick little design if you've never done that before it just creates some depth through your windows and creates some more custom walls if you're never used to doing that so then this could be like a walkway down here for us. And then I'm thinking of maybe a doorway around here. But what I want to do first is I want to bring these over. So I'm just going to grab these. And I'm just going to take this straight through here. So it is going to clip through, but it's not going to look crazy. I'm going to take that up right there. So it looks like it's coming through a hole in the wall right there. And then we're going to do this for all four of these. Just like that. And then I'm going to go into my organization tab. And I'm going to get an industrial fluid buffer. And I'm going to place this like right here. Yeah. And then I'm just going to grab myself the uh, Mark II pipe. And then make sure that's on uh, vertical. And then do that all the way along here. So I'm just going to put another buffer to the side of this. And then another one. And then another one. So I'm going to put four lines of fluid buffers just so I can kind of keep this consistency going. Whoa, that's a hole. Jesus. That's, that's a big drop. Nearly bloody died. I nearly died. Nearly died. And then I'm just going to start working on these fluid buffers until all this is done. And then we can start sending in the water so we can start storing it. And as I was saying, we can then start sending the empty packages back down to the other base so they'll start filling up. This video, there's going to be a lot of skips and a lot, of, a, a lot, all that kind of stuff because this is not really a crazy build, but it gives you a bit of an understanding why I'm doing it. Uh, but it's more of an informational on why and what I'm going to be doing in the future. But if you do want to see me build this, you can obviously catch the live streams or check out my second YouTube channel, which is having his, uh, his, his, his issues, issues at the minute. I can't even English today, which is, is having issues. It, I'm saying it again, which is having issues, bits, you f idiot, and I just sweared. Editing bits, can you please bleep that if you didn't? Thanks, if you did. Sorry, thanks. Yeah. Anyway, I'm I'm going bloody crazy here. But as I was saying, it's having issues with rendering right now because they're like six-hour vods and all that kind of stuff. So please bear with me; they will get uploaded. Just hang on tight. Okay, now you can see all of our things are moving and the empty canisters are moving and so is the water bottles are moving. The storages are currently filling up and yes, there's a wonky pipe and the only reason it's wonky is because it's they're temporary only so I can just go into this full pipe network, flush it so I can keep the water and the canisters moving and I don't have to go through each individual line for now because in the next video, obviously, we're going to be working on uh, utilizing this water with the aluminium solution. Alumina solution. Sloppy alumina. Alternate recipe. We've got the water being unpackaged as well. And then the empty canisters being loaded, being sent back to the water facility. All this then runs on the southern uh, highway. 
which then reaches its final destination point to unpackage the canisters and then load the bottled water in this facility right here. But hopefully you enjoyed this video and a little bit of a different, like, build, especially when it comes to water. Uh, and hopefully you understand everything. I know it's a little bit cut throughout and a little bit more choppy, but I kind of wanted to get to the good stuff, which is aluminium, which we're going to do in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching and check out my other content right here. And as always, keep smiling.